Hey everyone, my name is Leja, you can call me Lay, and welcome to another episode of A Little Atypical. I'm gonna do it a little differently today because I kind of just want this to be a chat because, as you know, the theme of the week is reinventing yourself, but I really wanted to talk about it in an unconventional way. When I was trying to figure out what I even wanted to talk about this week, I really did want to talk about motivation and discomfort. In the sense, I just took the theme of reinventing yourself and want to talk about these as subtopics. Today we are doing something a little different because I am recording my podcast before filming the YouTube video for reinventing yourself. It is very different because I think that when I do the video first, it kind of lets me know what I do cover and don't cover, but I'm just going to see how this goes today and see if I like this format better. What we are doing is we're going to jump right in and we're doing the card pull and all the little things I usually do towards the end and just really getting into the episode. So to start off, I want to talk about my experiences that kind of felt very uncomfortable for me when trying to reinvent myself. I'm not saying that reinventing yourself is always uncomfortable, but sometimes even when you want to change your life, there is resistance because of the things you are experiencing or you are afraid to experience. I had to get over it to really push myself to really get into the full process of reinventing myself. That's why I kind of describe right now as my reinvention 2.0. I had to reinvent myself before and it was a lot different. So now that I am reinventing myself again and honestly going about it in a way that's like full force, full faith in myself. Here are some things in the past that I've experienced that kind of kept me from getting to this point in the first place. Starting off was when I was reinventing myself, I spent so much time alone because, and actually this one I still am experiencing, but mostly because I feel the most myself when I'm by myself. When I'm around other people, one thing I hate doing is constantly having to explain myself. As someone who is kind of a recovering people pleaser, someone who kind of held other people's validation to a higher standard than my own in the past, this is something I really had to get over to really reinvent myself. Even in middle school, is something I really remember about myself is when there were rumors about me, I always got so frustrated because I was always upset that no one wanted to hear my sides of the situation. And I hated how they made assumptions without talking to me. But now that I'm older and more mature, Something I learned about specifically this concept is that I'm not responsible for other people's perceptions of me. I don't have to control the narrative. I don't have to be understood by people to keep going. And when you are changing your life, reinventing yourself, you kind of put yourself at risk for things like judgment or unsolicited advice that kind of challenges your vision too. I'm gonna stick to the example of what I'm doing now, which is really taking the time off to focus on my YouTube channel. For many people that won't make sense, especially being a college grad, it's kind of like you really spend four years in college and you're not working in your field and when are you gonna get to work? And those are questions I've had from relatives that are not particularly close to me and who don't necessarily understand me or the way my mind works or the things I want out of life. And even if I did tell them, because they have never lived that life I don't expect them to understand it. I actually had a talk about this with my brother at one point. 
I remember this conversation we had about coming from a family that's practical. And when you are an entrepreneur at your heart and your soul, that nothing you do will ever make sense to the people who would prefer stability and security over what entrepreneurship is, which is pure risk and in a sense, going for a way to feel freedom. When you are practical in that sense, you value stability. But when you want to reinvent yourself, you can't necessarily focus on stability. Because what stability is, is things staying still. Like It's kind of safe. Stability feels safe. And reinventing yourself is entering a new world. Once you try to reinvent yourself, you have to risk your stability in a sense, like risk feeling secure is what I'm saying. And I don't know if that makes sense. I'm just saying that to remind people reinventing yourself can really just feel like a lonely path. And a lot of people are kind of afraid of that loneliness, that they'll get judgment for the things they want to do. That even if they explain the things they want to do, that they'll get advice. And here's the thing about advice. Sometimes it does come from a place of wanting to see you do well, depending on the person. But it can also come from a place of judgment, come from a place of people seeing things from the way they live. But one thing I do say is take everyone's experiences and take everyone's words with literally the smallest grain. Because I used to take it to heart when I would tell people what I want to do with my life and they start looking at me like I'm crazy. And then I would kind of feel a sort of way, which is what makes me shut down from people. But then I realized that why would I take advice from someone who is nowhere what I want to be? And that does sound harsh, but there was no nicer way for me to say that. Taking advice from someone who has worked for someone their entire life, right? And you know what you're aiming to do is be your own boss. How can what they say be applicable if it's something they have not tried or lived? And that's when you realize that you have to seek out mentorship in people who are where you want to be and expose yourself to people who are where you want to be. Because a lot of times in your initial environment, you won't always find those people. And I do mean this in the nicest way, but there was no other way to say that. Also, when people are around you, you kind of realize that your path is your own. And the loneliness you feel is not always physical. It's always in the sense of knowing you're changing and knowing everything and everyone else around you isn't. If you are changing, you kind of want people to change with you. But that's not in your control. People will do things at their own timing in their own way. You also have a chance to kind of choose what you allow and what you don't allow within your life. And if people are acting in a way that is not in alignment with the way you're trying to change yourself, it is nothing personal if you have to take a step back from them. Obviously, the discomfort doesn't always happen because of other people. For me personally, the biggest discomfort with solely myself is it kind of challenged how I originally saw the world. So I had to do a lot of unlearning. And once I did learn a new way of thinking and being, it was kind of like entering a new world. It was horrifying. The things I noticed, the things I didn't notice before are now like my hyper fixation. For example, I try to have positive self-talk with myself. So I'm very intentional with my words and how I speak about myself. So when I hear someone or see someone, especially someone I love and someone close to me, how they react to themselves and how they talk about themselves, it does throw me off of like, why are you doing that, you know? Like, why would you say that? Other people won't see that as a big deal. Even a TikTok trend, for example, there was this girl talking about 
welcome to this side of TikTok and she called it mediocre black girl TikTok. And all I commented and there were so many likes, which is something I kind of hate because do you ever comment something and then you're getting spam of likes and you're just like, really, this is not even my own content. Maybe I just feel that as a content creator, but anyways, so she calls a mediocre girl TikTok. And I just said, I hated that word. Like I would never call myself mediocre because calling myself mediocre would mean I'm solidifying that in my identity. And then someone kind of like commented under me like, oh, it's meant to be sarcastic or ironic. But even so, because of how I started seeing words and how I'm cautious of the way I describe myself. When I see someone associating themselves with certain words or certain reactions to themselves, it does something in my brain. It's like things I really can't unsee. And it kind of freaks me out because it's like, I see things so differently and so in detailed that it's horrifying. I don't know how else to explain it. And then also I had to learn to accept that even if I see change in myself, I, it has to be enough for me to see change in myself. Because one thing that held me back for a really long time was that I would try to get validation in a sense that I am changing. I would say things like, hey, didn't my hair get so much longer? Or like, oh, I think I'm finally seeing progress from my fitness routine or something along those lines of where I try to get validation for the things I'm doing. And then I realize that even if the change isn't obvious, that doesn't mean the change isn't there. And I realized that when I realized I'm not just reinventing myself because I already reinvented myself before. And this time I'm just doing it in a way that I'm not holding back on my goals. Because even though I did reinvent myself, there were still things that needed to change. And in this era of myself, my reinvention 2.0, they are going to change. One of the biggest tips I have for coping with the discomfort is learning what's in your control versus what's not in your control. Because if you learn what's in your control and let go of what isn't trust me you will be so much happier for it i also got comfortable with the discomfort when i realized what exactly my fears were so kind of learning about fears and not turning away from them because i know this is probably going to be a controversial take in terms of like self-help and development and everything because people say like what you focus on is what manifests. I think because of how I learned about emotions and fears and stuff like that, that I'm not necessarily afraid of them and they don't really make me feel negative. Like I don't see having fear as a bad thing. I don't see traditionally negative emotions such as like anger, sadness, and everything like that as a bad thing. I actually use those things to my advantage. When reinventing yourself, you kind of have to. I recognize what my fear was like for the longest time. It was my fear of being perceived, fear of not being accepted, and also a fear of not doing things fast enough, which I guess in a sense is more like being impatient with the process. And that is what made me lose motivation or resisted my change. But now I'm a lot more patient. I am pretty much in touch with the things I fear. It actually makes me calmer to have that awareness about myself. And I would suggest that you build that awareness. I guess the very last thing I want to mention before I do a card pull and before I do my gratitude at the end is... When reinventing yourself, just know that you have to learn how to handle the things you want to become. I always thought about my fears with being perceived, right? So this is kind of piggybacking off the last point. But for example, I wanted to start posting content and being on YouTube and stuff like that. I always thought like it would feel great if 
I got like a large amount of subscribers and everything. But also with that type of attention, I have to be not afraid of getting negative attention and have awareness that even if I put something out there that some people may not like it, some people may not agree with it. And I have to be able to handle the dark side of attention in a sense, which comes with the identity of wanting to be a YouTuber, wanting to be an entrepreneur, that it's just a part of it. You know, there is the light parts, the highlights of the things you want. And the other side of it is not as light. Even if your goal is to be financially free and everything like that, let's say that as an example, that you want to earn more money. If you earned more money, what would you do with it? Would you be able to handle how differently people treat you because you have more money? When I think about how to handle the dark parts, it feels like I am kind of like accepting that no matter what I want, I know there is going to be good and bad, but I still want it regardless. So I think that's what kind of helped me with the discomfort of reinventing myself because I would want to know how I would even handle the changes that I want to manifest into my life. When you are reinventing yourself, there's no sense of security. I think having that in mind does bring a sense of peace because you need to know what you're getting into. And the thing is, the darker sides of the things you want shouldn't scare you. And if they may happen, they may not happen. But if they do, it's kind of like you have that process. Like if you live that life, you know what's about to come. So I know this is a more unconventional way of thinking about reinventing yourself. And that's the thing about my content is that's why I call this podcast a little atypical because I don't think about things or see things the same way many people do. I do kind of tap into both sides because I don't see things one way not everything is as black and white or or as nuanced per se when it comes to self-help and stuff like that just like uh, when people start reading like psychology and then reading dark psychology I guess what I'm saying is everything has a good and a bad and yeah I hope this doesn't scare you or steer you away from wanting to reinvent yourself, but I just wanted to talk about this in the most authentic way possible. On to the last part. For my friends who are interested in tarot, if you are not interested in this part or feels like it goes against your religious beliefs, spiritual beliefs, or anything like that, you can click off right here. Just remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you do like my content, even if you're not into the tarot stuff or oracle card stuff. But for my friends who do listen to this part, the card I got for this recording was the Four of Wands Upright, and I just felt like it was a great card to get. The Four of Wands card is basically like a midpoint card. It basically means that you are somewhere along the journey and things have been hard but good and it's time to celebrate it shows us celebration it is a why not kind of card that wants us to stand back and look at how far we've come but it's definitely not a completion card i think this card came up for the collective for this episode because having resistance to change is a sign you've been putting in the effort to leave your comfort zone, sign that you're more self-aware because you can recognize the challenges, and it is also a sign to do reflection. And what better way is there to celebrate than to recognize how far you've came? So it's kind of like a reminder to take a step back with gratitude and to really see all that you accomplished so far, even if you're feeling uncomfortable. And now, as for the last part, I'm grateful for the growth I've had. I know I say that in like every episode. There's nothing specific I am thinking about. I'm thankful for the support I've been getting for this. 
I am thankful that my life right now, I'm just so happy to wake up every day because I don't think there was a time in my life that I actually felt this happy waking up that I look forward to my days constantly. I know I'm living in my truth and when I think about how I feel now versus how I felt in the past, I've realized how much I've grown and I'm so excited to see where this growth is leading me. So yeah, remember if you're on Spotify, don't forget to rate the podcast, follow the podcast, and if you're on YouTube, it would be such a big help if you could add this to where else you listen to your podcast and also like, comment, and subscribe to the episode. I look forward to creating some more. So have a good day, evening, or night, and we'll talk soon. Okay, bye!